Hey, that's um, Wes Montgomery's Mr. Walker. Brilliant song. It's actually, uh, the intro is the coolest part. Well, actually, the whole song's really cool, but I love that intro, so I thought I'd do a tutorial on it. Um, it's actually, it's very difficult, actually, and I, I probably need to practice it more. That, that performance felt a little hesitant because it, there's just so much movement from the left hand, but it's just a testament to uh, Wes's ability. Uh, all round, and it's just such a cool riff. So, um, without further ado, let's get started. I hope you've been practicing your octaves. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so the very, very beginning of the song. Well, actually, first I just want to cover something. As you probably know, Wes uses his thumb. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't use your thumb, you can still play the song. <laughs> badly no um you can still play it obviously uh you might want to roll the tone off a little bit but that's you know it's up to you it's no big deal if you just use a pick you don't have to do it exactly like wes um but anyway to get that vibe using your thumb is quite fun okay so the very first note that you hear uh, on the recording which actually is off uh the incredible jazz guitar of wes montgomery um so we're grabbing the first fret of the fifth uh, sorry third fret of the fifth string and our third finger plays the fifth fret of the third string. Did any of that make sense? This is difficult, this stuff. So first finger on the third fret of the fifth string, third finger on the fifth fret of the third string. Wow, now I know why that was so difficult, because they're switcheroos. Okay, so uh, we play from the fifth string and with our thumb, and we're striking. <laughs> and you're striking the fifth string and the third string. Now, when you're doing octaves, you have to lean your first finger slightly onto the string uh, in between the three strings that you're playing or the two strings that you're playing. So this is the fifth string, this is the third string. We don't want to hear the fourth string in this scenario and in all your octave scenarios. So um, yeah, you lean, you just lean across it slightly so we can't hear it. But of course, fret the third note firmly and same with your third finger, you wanna fret that note nice and firm but cut that note off in the middle. It gives a bit of a percussive sound. Okay. All right, and you want to practice going straight through uh, that string and getting a really nice instant pop. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing worth mentioning has escaped my mind, so we'll keep moving along. So once you've hit those three, oh, of course, lean your third finger so that it's blocking the second, the string under it. So we get this, uh, you know, we, we, we want to block out all the other strings. Now, if you really want to go the extra detail, which really helps, if you want to get that percussive, let your first finger actually block the sixth string a little bit too. So, so, we, so watch this finger. Just by pushing it, just by placing it ever so slightly, it's actually just touching the sixth string. Almost like when you're learning your first E chord or you know difficult chord and you're accidentally leaning on strings, we actually want to utilize that. And that means we can really, really hit the guitar and not worry too much about what strings we're hitting and it's quite percussive. Okay, um, So this is great, this piece for, for mastering your octave practice, like using octaves, it's really fantastic for that. Okay, so we've got our first thing. I know, I know this is sort of a slow-moving video, but um, it's thorough. That's the idea. Now, after we've done that, we move straight across, and we're going to do the exact same thing, same techniques, um, but we need our pinky because we're not 
we're not well you can stretch out your third but i'd use my pinky we're going to going to grab the sixth fret on the second string so we go okay so remembering everything i've got my first finger numbing that fifth string pinky leaning on the first string over here can't hear the fifth string can't hear that string in the middle okay so that that's a c for uh, c octave f, f octave that's, now we slide that third fret up to the sixth and we maintain that sh seven sixth. So we go up to the sixth and we maintain that shape. From here we hop across. We can hop across. And I'm now on the five and the eight. Same technique, third string, first string. We need to use our pinkies because the whole step down, as you know when you're tuning your guitar. The interval from the third string to the second string kind of changes things. So whenever we're playing octaves uh, from the six and five, we can do this shape. And the fifth string, octaves from the fifth string, same. But from here, we actually need to go up a little higher. Because your second string is basically flatter. Then, uh, the, the jump to the second string is not as high, so we need to compensate for that. There's your octave. So... Uh, in case you're not familiar with octaves as well, an octave is the eighth note, the return of the sequence, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C and C, and it's a nice fat sound. Alright, so we're up to here. The other option you've got is go all the way up to the tenth. Alright, now from here... Or if you've gone to here, we now play this B flat seven. Well, it would actually be a B flat nine. That being the nine there, so that chord's play. So we go. Oh, hang on. Okay, or. So this is played by flattening your first finger across the sixth fret. Your second finger goes on the seventh fret of the third string. All right. Our first finger fretting the sixth fret there is we need to hear that. So four, three, two. That's what it should sound like uh, in terms of strings. Fourth string, third string, second string, and the pinky is playing the eighth fret, which is a C, which is the nine of a B flat. So we get. Whoop. I, I like to slide just straight up that string because we don't, I don't know, it's it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Okay, so that's what you want to get happening, nice and slow. Or you may have preferred. Okay, from here... We're using the, the octave from the fourth string, which you need your first and pinky. And again, make sure you're blocking that third string and that first string. And if you really want to be extra careful, let the first finger rest over and cut that off. So. Okay. So now we go this same shape, right? So that's on the eighth fret and that's on the 11. 8th fret of the 4th, 11th of the 2nd. So we go 8, 6, 3, like that. Now, think of your first finger. Think of your first finger. 8, 6, 3. And try to let your pinky just follow along. Alright, so we're going 8, 6, 3. Alright, you should be able to work that out. I don't, I'm, I'm going to really speed up now. Um, if you're having a lot of trouble breaking down this next part, work on the first part for, uh, and, and obviously click back and check it out. So from here, now we play the uh, C, uh, C sharp major, well, probably a D flat major 7 would be the right terminology. Okay, so we go C major 7, uh, uh, sorry, D flat major 7. Um, so for this one, first finger on the 4th fret, 5th string. Third finger on the sixth fret of the fourth string, second finger on the fifth 
fret of the third string and pinky on the sixth fret of the second string. Okay, so we've gone. And I think he kind of might do a little bit of a, Wes might do a bit of a slide like that. Okay. Where were we? So then we go the octave from the where we are. So we're going to do the octave at that point. Whoop. And then from here, so we're going uh, octave. And now just keep the octave shape from the fifth string. Four. Think of your first finger, fourth fret, sixth fret, and then we do a B, we're doing a B minor, B flat minor seven, bar right across on the sixth fret, third finger plays the eighth fret. Get that, if you've got your thumb up here, you're not going to be able to do these kinds of chords, so get your thumb under, bend your wrist, okay? So we're, we're flattening right across, playing the eighth fret. Get on the tip of that finger so we, we want to hear that fourth string. So this is a D7 sharp 9, second finger on the 5th fret of the 5th string, first finger on the 4th fret of the 4th string, third finger tucks in there, uh, you're not really going to be able to see that that well, but that's third finger on the, oh my screen's gone black, I need to make sure I can see what's going on, your third finger goes on the 5th fret of the 4th string and your pinky on the 6th fret of the, sorry, third finger on the 5th fret of the 3rd string, yeah I think I said that right, pinky on the sixth fret of the second string. It's like a triangle, okay, see that? And then the pinky adds that. Uh, Hendrix used this chord, everyone knows that. If you don't, you're not everyone apparently. So, okay, so we actually, all we do is we keep our pinky and then to play the, the D, what's this chord? D flat seven, it's really just a D flat seven. Uh, to play that D flat seven, um, so that's a D seven sharp nine. When we pull back to here, we keep our pinky, move this shape back, but keep your pinky still. Okay, and and uh, then we do very similar to the start, this octave. Then we go right back to the first fret, but you need your pinky. Jump up to the fifth with that shape, back to the first fret. That's the third fret. I know it probably sometimes looks like I'm actually going over. I'm not. Um, that's. I think when you're a bit more experienced, you'll find you play right to the limits of the frets to make everything comfortable. Um, so yeah, don't be confused by that. Um, yeah. So that last bit, and that's a quick slide. Now, where's had a very loose like. See this. See. Watch how I. You almost let go just when you get to it. And you want to be very relaxed. I, I mean, call it an instinct, but I, I feel like when Wes was playing, he was very... Even his solos, though. Very relaxed feel, you know? I tend to probably drag a little bit when I play like that. Um, but, you know... Where's the master of that stuff? You know, it's, it's almost a little bit staccato at, at times uh, in a very relaxed way. So, um, you know what? I think uh, that's probably enough for, for, for one lesson on that. Yeah, that will probably keep you very busy. Um, I guess this will kind of be part one. And I'll do a part two for the intro.